everyone. Welcome back to, to the Ruderman Roundtable. I'm State Senator Russell Ruderman from the Puna and Ka'u District on the Big Island. And I host our roundtable here to talk about politics, good government, and environmental issues, uh, especially here in Hawaii. My, I'm very excited today to have Gary Hooser as my guest. Thank you for joining me, Gary. Thank you for having me, uh, Senator. Wonderful to see you. Gary Hooser formerly represented Kauai and Niihau in the Hawaii State Senate, where he served as Majority Leader. Also served for eight years on the Kauai County Council and as director of the Environmental Quality Control Office in the state of Hawaii. He presently serves in a volunteer capacity as board president of the Hawaii Alliance for Progressive Action, or HAPA, a 501c3 nonprofit focusing on education and advocacy. Thanks for being here, Gary. Thanks for having me. I'm Barry. I've been following the work that you've been doing for many years, and I'm very, very inspired by yeah. it. I really appreciate it. So I know one of the main things you've been working on the last few years is the Hawaii Alliance for Progression Action, for Progressive Action, or HAPA. Tell me about HAPA. You know, for, for years, I, I've been thinking that, that we need here in the state of Hawaii uh, an overarching group to represent progressive issues. See, there's silos. There's uh, uh, environmental groups. There's gay rights groups. There's economic justice groups. But there isn't uh, an umbrella kind of group, overarching, even though I don't like to use the word umbrella. Uh, and so. Uh, a couple years ago, talking oh, with friends. What, what's wrong with umbrella? Does that well, mean? because it, it 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 doesn't have the focus okay. that a dedicated right. group might have. I thought maybe um, I was missing a political. No, correct. no, no, no. Yeah, um, the uh, but as it turns out, uh, we we serve kind of an umbrella function. Mm -hmm. It's more of a networking thing. So we we will try to get the Sierra Club, Appleseed, uh, Surfrider, uh, Face, and and various other organizations, labor unions to get, get in the same room and say, what do we have in common? How do we work together? Uh, and, and economic justice issues is emerging as one of the focuses. We deal with environmental issues, economic justice issues, uh, food security, uh, food justice issues, and uh, other, other kinds of things like that. Uh, yeah. now, so, how did it come to be? What, what brought it into being? Well, it was, uh, it was my idea that I was sharing with, with various friends over a couple of years, actually. And then uh, as my work on the Kauai County Council kind of moved forward. I realized it was something, it was more than I wanted to do on a statewide basis. And I give my, my daughter credit for it. My daughter, Kelly Rosa, who you know, worked at the yeah. Capitol. Uh -huh. She told me, Dad, she said, Dad, you got to either pull the trigger or stop talking about it. It's going to eat you up. And so I did. I went out and we formed a statewide board. Uh, there's people on every island, uh, good people representing different organizations and different groups, if you would. And one of the first projects we came up with was a, uh, uh, program called the Kuleana Academy. Uh, you know, you've been serving in, in the State Senate for a while, and I've been serving various capacities for 15 years or more, and, and I think we were both frustrated about the, the, the slow to, uh, pace of change, or even sometimes going backwards. And I wondered, how come more people don't run for office? You know, how come more people who share our, our worldview, if you would, uh, of, a, of a, a government that puts people on the planet first over, over greed, I mean, big business. And I came to the conclusion that it was a lack of good candidates. People didn't know how to run. Uh, people, good people we have, but people that they don't know how to, they don't have the first idea of how, they, how you run for public office. So we started this Kuleana Academy. We're moving into our third segment. Uh, we're going to have a, a, a group in September, this coming September. And I encourage people to go to our website, hapahai.org, and apply if they're interested at all in running for public office. Uh -huh. Um, so this is sort of a training program for people interested in being a candidate. Help it, them be more that's successful. exactly what it is. You know, it's a training program. We do skills training, uh -huh. so we'll teach people how to raise money, how to uh, knock on doors, how to analyze your district, uh, public speaking skills, the skills that you need uh, to be a credible candidate. And we also talk about issues, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's economic issues or environmental issues, that kind of thing. And we introduce the people to. Uh, major figures in the, in the uh, environment. Uh, we've had former Governor Governor Wahe'e, Governor Abercrombie spoke, uh, various sitting, I hope you're going to speak to our group hopefully in the future. Oh, wonderful. Uh, but we've had House members and senators come in and tell them how they got started. Yeah, you know? I mean, everybody has a story to tell how they got, first got elected. Right. And I think at the end of the day, it's a lot of hard work. You know, it's a lot of knocking on doors. It's a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. um, so you've graduated two classes of mm -hmm. Kulian Academies, and you'll be beginning your third one this fall. That's right. right. And it's a, it's a competitive process. 
This last class had 45 or so people apply. Oh, I see. Uh, I don't uh, pick the people. There's uh -huh. a committee and there's an application process. They fill out application, there's interviews, mm -hmm. and uh, the committee selected 17 people from around the state. Uh, it's five weekends over three months. So we fly people in basically as an organization and uh, we pay their airfare, we put them in a hotel, we feed them, and we bring in speakers uh, for two days, five times. Uh, and uh, universally, the, the people that participate in the program uh, have benefited tremendously and they, and they like it a lot. Uh, right. At this last class, we were expecting, uh, we surveyed them after the class, and 83% and of the 17 people intend to run for public office uh, in 2018. Hop, I think it's important, is, is nonpartisan. We have Republican speakers, we have Democratic speakers, we've had Green Party speakers, and we don't actually get involved in their campaigns. We educate and train and then, and then let them go. And, and uh, it's, it's pretty exciting, actually, for the state. Right. So there's, not everyone who applies is accepted, so you're looking for certain qualities in the people yeah, who yeah. accept the academy. Is that the number 17, is that the number that you felt you could handle, or is that how many people? Seem to qualify back here. Good, good question. We we started the first class with twenty, uh -huh. and we lost maybe two through attrition. People decided it wasn't for them. <clears throat> uh, and in the second class, we started doing some more research and realized that fifteen actually is the ideal number. Fifteen in a class, everyone gets to participate better. You know, as, as you know in politics, if you give everybody a three-minute speech, and you get ten people, it's it's just for fifteen. It just adds up. Yeah. So we were targeting fifteen. Okay. Uh, Enrolled 17, mm -hmm. expecting some to drop out, but, but none of them dropped out. And, and it's uh, women, it's all uh, ethnic and geographic areas. Uh, we're, we're, we're looking for people who, in general, again, share our worldview uh, of progressive politics, people who uh, are environmentally sensitive, who, who care about uh, taking care of, of people and believe in, in raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour, for example, and those kinds of things. That's our, our target uh, audience. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of talk about the young emerging leader, and, and in a sense we're looking for that, but also there's no age requirement. Mm -hmm. We have people in the program uh, 50 and 60 years old, I believe. So, so are there certain particular qual besides wanting to run for public office, what qualities, uh, what characteristics would, would qualify someone? What do you look for? What do you consider essential? In, in I think it's, if, if you look at what makes a good candidate, uh -huh. You know, it's not someone who just got off the plane yesterday. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, they have to be familiar with uh, Hawaii, either, either born here or lived here a significant amount of time. So they're familiar with the culture, they're familiar with the environment that they're, uh, where they live. Uh, so essentially like people who are vi could be a viable yeah, yeah, candidate. Yeah. Right? Ideally, the person would be involved in other organizations. Mm -hmm. They sit on the Chamber of Commerce or the Farm Bureau or uh, you know, Rotary Clubs or any number, Hawaiian Canoe Clubs, Civic Clubs. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're involved in the community already. Mm -hmm. They have maybe run for office before, mm -hmm. and they didn't know how. So, some things like, like raising money, it's really hard, and it people hard. are intimidated by that. And so we bring in a professional fundraiser who teaches them, you got to ask, guys. That's good. You know, and, and she actually uh, has the class write a script right then and there, huh. and then sends them off in the corner and says, okay, start calling people. And you that know. is one of the hardest things, yeah. isn't it? Just to ask for help or ask for money or whatever. You yeah, need but you have to believe in yourself yeah. and you have to believe in your mission. So, so they, and they, they do it and it's hard, but it's a, it's a, a good training exercise. What are some of the um, initiatives, or you mentioned a few of the areas of involvement, economic justice, mm -hmm. environmental, that, that's the kind of things that you're educating right. them on in terms of subject matter right. along the way? Or, you know, some things, people will come in, uh, for example, uh, without being exposed, some of the younger participants, without being exposed to the uh, education, if you would, on some of the issues. Mm -hmm. uh, you would uh, I'll talk about uh, 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 death, uh, death with dignity or uh, the, uh, you know, killing bad guys, you know, uh, uh, the death penalty. Mm -hmm. and, and so we don't, you know, people are entitled to whatever they, they believe and we don't, you know, penalize people for believing a certain way, but we try to point out, let's say with the death penalty, the, the disproportionate impact on people of color mm -hmm. or people in poverty and, and the number of falsely convicted people and the, the cost. So they understand that, yes, maybe there's bad guys that, we, that deserve to die, maybe not, depending on your, your, your fundamental faith, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's other factors, you know, that you can be opposed to the death penalty 
because of these other factors. Same with uh, a woman's right to choose. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be against abortion, but support a woman's right to choose. Right. You know? So we try to uh, talk to people about the issues to show them there's different ways to look at the issue. Because as a first-time candidate, a lot of people come to politics with a few areas of interest, and then you get asked questions about all the other right. areas. It's, so you're, you're getting them up to speed to answer all that wide range of questions and issues. We, we try. You know, uh, one of the biggest lessons, uh, and, and I just learned this lesson from the class, we ask everyone first class, why are you, why are you thinking about running for office? Mm -hmm. And they, pre they proceed to what issue and what issues are important to you. So they proceed to tell us their silo. Mm -hmm. And we teach them, you have to know what your district is important. Mm -hmm. So you might, environment might be your issue, but your district might be education or it might be crime. Mm -hmm. And so if, to get elected, you have to know and understand what your district wants. You don't let go of your passion, but you really have to know about your district. In terms of, so when you're messaging and when you're out talking to people, you have to understand that, that yeah. education is the number one thing, and I'm going to fight for education. But at the same time, you're going to fight for the environment, too. And that's so important because the voters want to see someone who appears to be well rounded and not, fo not focused on, like you say, one silo right. type issue. Right. They want to know someone who's open minded and concerned with the community's right. concerns, not just their own pet peeves. Abs right. Absolutely. Yeah. And many people come in out of a silo. It could be uh, environment or GMOs or, or uh, Hawaiian issues, for example. And then you realize that a majority of the community isn't in that group necessarily. And it has to be about making the community a better place, making the, the state and, and the island and, and the world, and not just what you want. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah. What's the 343 initiative? 343 initiative is um, Chapter 343, HRS, it's a Hawaii state law, yeah. is the uh, Hawaii Environmental Protection Act, HIPAA. Oh, okay. So the federal act is NEPA, the National Environmental Protection Act. The state has its own EIS law. That's in general what it is. It's an EIS law. Uh, serving uh, in the Abercrombie administration as director of the Office of Environmental Quality Control, that is the, the law that that office administers. And so we're, HAPA, and I'll tell you about this in a little bit later in more detail, is pursuing some action against uh, the state and Syngenta uh, for not complying with that law. I see. So it's about w doing environmental impact statements yeah, when they're yeah. required and, yeah, and exactly. sticking to the law. Exactly. Okay. Well, thank you. It's so interesting. I'm here with Gary Hooser on the Ruderman Roundtable, and we'll be back after a short break. Thank you for joining us. Aloha, I'm Richard Concepcion, the host of Hispanic Hawaii. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. We will bring you entertainment, educational, and also we'll tell you what is happening right here within our community. Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way. There's got to be solution How to make a brighter day What do we do? We've got to give a little love Have a little hope Make this world a little better Make it a better Try a little more hope Aloha and welcome back to the Ruderman Roundtable. I'm State Senator Russell Ruderman and I'm here with Gary Hooser talking about politics in Hawaii. Gary Hooser started the Hawaii Academy for Alliance for Progressive Action, or HAPA, and one of their projects is the Kuleana Academy, which uh, cultivates and trains uh, political candidates. So look, looking at the bigger picture a little bit, Gary, what made you, what do you think we're going to accomplish with HAPA and the Kuleana Academy? I mean, what, what, what's the impact you're hoping to have on Hawaii politics? Yeah. I'm hoping that we, to collectively, all those many people working on this issue, can move the needle in terms of public policy mm -hmm. uh, in the state of Hawaii and move it toward a more progressive, a more people-friendly, more environmentally friendly place. Mm -hmm. uh, I am extremely disappointed, and the, and the people I'm working with are very unhappy, uh, frankly, with the, with the state legislature and most of the councils, the county councils, not to mention the federal government. Mm -hmm. And uh, for a state to have uh, almost a, a totally blue uh, democratic you know, controlled legislature 
I'm disappointed that we, we're not moving faster on, on, on issues that uh, are important to working people and to the environment. A case in point, I, I, I talk about the uh, payday lending. Yeah. Okay, payday lending is, in my opinion, a, a predatory lending practice that preys upon the hardest working, you know, lowest income people. People uh, living paycheck to paycheck, well, just yeah, barely, right? Exactly, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. old yeah. people, just people just struggling. And, mm -hmm. uh, and 12 years ago when I was in the Senate, I tried to introduce a bill to cap interest rates. And we still haven't been able we to do that. We, still haven't, we haven't been able to cap on the 18% or 32%. <laughs> and what's up with that? There, that is, and these are examples that are tangible. They hurt people. Yes. You know, this is not just, you know, some bill. It's, it's hurting people. Uh, and so there's examples like that that uh, I'm uh, frustrated personally and uh, losing patience with the, with the rate of change and, and want to accelerate that change. And I think if we can, collectively we, the people around the state who share the, the dissatisfaction of the pace of change, if, if we can work together and focus our energy on getting these uh, new leaders into office, we can change the discussion, change the conversation, and therefore change the policy that comes out of the state legislature and the county councils. That's my hope. That's fantastic. You said something to me a year or two ago that stuck in my mind, and I wonder if that's part of it. Yeah. You said, I'm too old for incremental change and a, and a study group. <laughs> and I, I feel exactly the same. I don't know if maybe it's because I'm old or just impatient. But that tends to be what politics has been is often the tiniest of changes when we need to make a big change yeah. and a study group when we want to do something but nobody has the guts to really do it. Yeah. You know, so so you're trying to change the overall game here instead of just a little one piece exactly. here and one uh, piece there. Some things are, are very clear cut, if if in my opinion. I know things are complicated issues. Uh, you know, we can't ban styrofoam single use containers. You know, I mean what's up with that? Uh, the uh, uh, plastic bags, some, some basic environmental stuff that is real simple, it's not complicated. Yeah. Uh, payday lending, the, uh, we, we can do much more. Mm -hmm. And I, I'd like government leaders, uh, and I appreciate the work that you do. Mm -hmm. I really do, I sincerely do. You, you speak to these issues so clearly, and you believe uh, in many, if not all, the same things I, I do, that, that people on the planet gotta come first. And if we're going to err as a government, if we're going to make a mistake, if we're going to lean one way, we should lean toward people mm -hmm. and the planet and the environment, not lean toward business because we're scared. And, and I come from a, a business background. You were like businessman of the year or something. So we both understand the importance of a strong economy. Mm -hmm. But we can't let the, the very richest and the very biggest businesses drive the agenda. You know, it has to be a people-centered agenda. When you were talking about we're in a virtually all blue state, or at least our legislature is virtually all Democratic, and yet we couldn't get a hearing for a $15 an hour minimum wage, right. even though it's a national movement and a national discussion, we didn't even get a hearing for it. We didn't even talk. That's an example of, I, I share your frustration in many of those yeah. ways. There. And that it is, it is shared by people almost universally uh, from all walks of life. It, uh, Government in general has been on the decline, the, the respect for government, mm -hmm. you know, faith and confidence in government, and, and we need to turn that around. And, and the only way we're gonna do that, and it's not, it's not just the fault of the politicians, the people are responsible. They're responsible for taking ownership of the government, and it's hard work. As you know, people gotta show up to testify, they gotta help candidates run for office, they gotta give money, they have to take ownership. They can't just go off in their world and, and let this stuff happen, and otherwise, we keep going in the same direction we're going now. And all this is uh, against a backdrop of uh, constantly declining voter participation mm -hmm. and political participation. Especially in Hawaii, ha we have by some measures the lowest voter participation in the country. And uh, so, so we, we have challenges in trying to motivate voters. And of course, we, have, we need to motivate the next generation of leaders as you're doing with the Kulian Academy. And those two things are related. I think if, uh, you know, millennials, if we were to say, could see more candidates that look like them and talk like them, they might be more interested in voting. I think uh, people have tuned out of voting in large part because they feel the government's not responsive to them. So mm -hmm. it's a vicious cycle that's becoming worse. Absolutely. We're not responsive and they're voting even less. 
but be less responsive yeah. because they're not voting. Absolutely, and, and the, 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 the best voter in the world is an 80-year-old retiree, and That's the worst right. are these young people. Uh -huh. And so we've got we've got to bring the, the younger generation to be more active, and, and I'm hoping that when you add it all that's been happening in, in uh, Hawaii and in the nation uh, with uh, the Bernie Sanders movement, mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, emergence of uh, Donald Trump as president, and all that's going on, that there's this increased urgency. And I certainly see more people are marching in the street, more mm -hmm. people are, are being active. And I'm asking people, young and old, to focus on 2018. You know, d don't think about this is going to take you know, 30 years of your time for mm -hmm. now, even though it, it never goes away. Yeah. But focus on 2018. Get out there, help candidates. Get out there, get involved in your government. And let's try to make things happen uh, in the coming 18 months. 2018 seems particularly important to me too because of you know what happened last year with our national election and if we don't respond to it with a resurgence of progressive values and you know democracy if we don't respond now I mean, it's oh. particularly and, and the U.S. Congress was already most would argue fairly dysfunctional in terms of working at a glacial pace right uh, but now now it's going to be even worse. Mm -hmm. And it's the states and the county governments that need to step up. Yeah. You know, the states need to step up on environmental protection. We have an EPA that's being run by, uh, you know, uh, people that don't believe in don't climate believe change, in you climate know, change. and that are rolling yeah. back. Chlorpyrifos is a, is a neurotoxin pesticide that the EPA was going to ban. It's mm -hmm. used by the ton in the state of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, the EPA was getting ready to ban it, and the new director said, no, we're not going to ban it. The state could do that. The governor could do that by executive order, the Department of Agriculture could do it, or the legislature could do it. And that's what we need to, as a state, start doing, stepping up and filling the gap left or being created by the mm -hmm. federal government. As the federal government steps back from economic issues and environmental protections, we need to step forward. And you need legislators and administrators willing to, to do that. Mm -hmm. Good um, point. Yeah. What do you think are the biggest challenges in motivating people to either run for office or um, get more involved in politics yeah. other ways. You know, I think running for office, uh, I think most people don't think they're good enough. And I said, no, believe me, you know. You are. I've worked, good enough. I've worked with a lot of different, <laughs> as you have, you know, that, and you wonder how did so-and-so get elected. So, so number one, they're good enough. Yeah. Uh, and they, they're afraid, as a, they, they're a public figure, and, and they're afraid what that means. And I basically say, unless you're running for governor or mayor or something, I wouldn't worry about it too much. If you made some uh, some youthful indiscretions, as they would, you know, uh, experimented you know, in college, for yeah, <laughs> like both all the recent presidents have, uh, and the money. The money is huge. Uh, you know, the uh, on the Kauai, Kauai County Council, I think most council and house races, we're talking thirty to fifty thousand dollars. And most people think there's no way I can raise thirty or fifty thousand dollars, and it's hard. But if you if you're willing to do the work, mm -hmm. and you are a credible candidate, and you put your name out there, I think that people will come to you and want to help you. Whether it's uh, a place like the Sierra Club or uh, uh, labor unions or, or others who uh, want to see uh, new blood coming in, they can help with with money too. And mm -hmm. our program teaches people how to raise money. Uh, you know, you might you have to make calls. You got to be willing to to make that call. Uh, but so that so it's money is is a big roadblock. So money that you have to raise, fear of being a, suddenly a public figure, and also thinking that you're just not good enough. Yeah, for it. and so most people aren't used to speaking on stage. Yes, and that true. takes a little work. You know, Excellent. I mean, it, uh, I I still get nervous when I talk on stage. You know, uh, so it takes practice. We do, we give that in in the Kuleana Academy. Uh, it's much practice is what it takes. Because yeah. no one's born. A good public oh, speaker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. does practice. It does, practice. and, and uh, you know, I, we we teach never turn down an opportunity to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, so when someone says we do the blessing, oh, you I give see. a toast, will you introduce so and so? You always say yes. That's, oh, that's I should have gone. I should have gone to this school before. Yeah, no, <laughs> well, we we tried because we have the people teaching the class are people that have actually done it. Are people mm -hmm. that have worked in the trenches. Right. Uh, you know, people that are actually knocking on doors. How can someone apply to be part of the Kulian Academy? Uh, right now, the next program starts in September. September. And it requires five weekends. Mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes that's a challenge for uh, people. You know, mm -hmm. that uh, if you live on the neighbor islands, you, we fly you over. 
Um, and so you would go to our website, hapahi.org. Hapahi.org. Yeah, okay, H-A-P-A-H-I.org. <laughs> and look, look for the Kuleana Academy link. I see. Okay. And there's an application. All right. And then that, I believe it will have the dates that we're tentatively planning right now. So people can go to that, fill out the application, encourage them to, to, to do it. I think the deadline is the end of July. A good time to be thinking about it. Yeah, that. yeah. And uh, again, universally, the, all the participants, I think if you, if you polled them today, they would think that this was a great experience. Yeah. They've learned a lot. I know one or two of them, and I know they do feel that way. Yeah. And tell me, for people who don't necessarily want to run for office but want to get more involved politically, is HAPA a good organization to join in that regard? Absolutely, and the Kuleana Academy also, we've generated a fair amount of uh, campaign managers. Uh -huh. uh, there are people that have met at the Kuleana Academy, one run for office, and the oh. other one said, I'll be your manager. Nice. Uh, so, it's, so, this, so the Kuleana Academy, you may not want to run this time, but you want to be involved in the process, I encourage you to apply. HAPA, uh, in general, is uh, we're not, uh, we don't support candidates. But if you want to get involved in, the, in the, a movement to change uh, what's going on in Hawaii, yes, sign up on, on our email list on hapahi.org. Then go to hapahi.org and sign up. And without wanting to be a candidate or going right. to the academy, they can stay in touch and you get updates of things you're exactly. doing. Find ways they can get involved exactly. and be more yeah. involved. And we're a statewide organization. Mm -hmm. we're on, I, I live on Kauai mm -hmm. and fly around, travel a lot. Um, I'm, uh, but we have board members and we have members uh, people who are supporters on every island. Any challenge? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're, we're, we're doing other programs in addition to the Kuleana Academy. Uh, we had the People's Congress uh, last year. We brought in groups uh, from all over the state representing uh, whether it's Hawaiian issues or environmental issues or economic justice issues and did uh, workshops and raised awareness and recruited other emerging leaders. Okay. Well, we'll have to have you back to talk about some of those other things, Gary. But I do want to say, you know, thank you for coming. And I think of what you're doing with HAPA and the Kulian Academy is the most important thing happening in our state politically because mm -hmm. this, this tiny little bit of trying to fix one thing at a time and everybody on their own hasn't worked. And you're, you're working on a systematic program to make real progress. And I, I admire it greatly and I support it a thousand percent. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for coming to be on Guest on Rudiman Roundtable. I'm here with Gary Hooser. And we'll see you again in a couple of weeks.